Successful technicians, diagnosticians in particular, have a thorough understanding of how systems and components work, specifically at their most basic level. And like it or not, this includes understanding the physics involved. The physics, the physical laws that drive these components to function within the systems that they do to accomplish a goal. Now, being able to understand these physical laws helps technicians drive their approach forward through proper testing and proper analysis. Being able to understand how these systems and components work individually allows us to build anticipation. Anticipation on what to expect when performing tests and evaluating the results of those tests. And why is this important? Because if we understand what good looks like, we will certainly be able to understand what bad looks like and recognize it as a problem when we encounter it. Welcome back to our second installment of System and Component Performance Evaluation. This trainer video is focused on the functionality of solenoids. Now, as you are likely aware, solenoids can be found from the front to the back of the vehicle on virtually every single platform, regardless of year, make, or model we encounter in the shop on a daily basis. And it's for this reason that we focus on solenoids functionality because we encounter it so frequently, we need to be able to understand how they work, how to test them, how to anticipate the test results, and what they mean to us as diagnosticians. And since solenoids can be found on virtually every single make and model out there, it benefits us as technicians to become intimately familiar with their functionality. Because knowledge is power, and power gives us confidence. Want to know more? Join me on this episode of The Train. A solenoid, by definition, is an inductive device. That is, if we flow electrical current through the conductive wire wound within it, a magnetic field builds around that wire and creates physical shuttling. And we capitalize on that from many angles in the automobile. As with all inductive devices, the electrical current is what's responsible for building the magnetic field. When we take a long strand of conductor, such as a copper wire, and wind it many times around a fixed point, that conductor becomes an inductor. And an inductor carries electrical current to create a magnetic field. Now, to give some structure to what it is we are discussing today, I'd love for you to refer to these two articles listed below in a description based around Ohm's Law and Lenz's Law. Ohm's Law describes the relationship between voltage, electrical pressure, current flow, the movement of electrons pushed through the circuit by the voltage, and resistance, the opposition to that current flow. Lenz's Law describes the shape of the current ramp we will be discussing later on. As electrical current flows through an inductor, the magnetic field is created. And as that magnetic field is created, it too produces its own counter electromotive force. And that counter electromotive force, as described, slows the movement of electrons. Like any successful lab scope diagnostician, the idea of implementing the lab scope allows us to test multiple circuits simultaneously. With that, regarding the solenoids functionality, we should be testing voltage supply, ground supply, and of course, current flow, because current is the work being performed. Regarding DSO or digital storage oscilloscope testing, it's our jobs as diagnosticians to capture and evaluate the waveform acquisitions. Step one would be identifying the type of circuit the solenoid exists on. Be it a pull-up or pull-down circuit defines the circuit as follows. A pull-up circuit is one in which a ground is provided to the circuit at all times. And the circuit is energized by completing a path to voltage source, allowing current to flow through the circuit and energize the solenoid. And you guessed it, a pull-down circuit is just the opposite. A pull-down circuit has voltage supplied to the solenoid at all times. And a switch to a path to ground allows the circuit to energize and the solenoid to function as such. With that, we have to reference a wiring diagram before we get started on our diagnostic testing. 
Now, determining the proper test location is equally as important as determining whether the circuit is of a pull-up or pull-down design. Facing the fact that the digital storage oscilloscope is going to display for you the voltage available at the test location, we have to keep in mind the circuit design. If there's exterior influences like unwanted voltage drop located in the circuit, it could affect our test results. Next stop in service information is component location. Where the component is located on the wiring diagram may appear to be a simple place to test. However, in actuality, when you find the component location within service information, it might change your tune a little bit. Testing at the most convenient location is always desirable, but it might not always be the best location. Now regarding waveform characteristics, I first want to begin discussing the current ramp. The current ramp amplitude, as it relates to Ohm's law, defines how much work is being performed in the circuit. As the inductive device takes on energy in the form of magnetism, it's the current flow that allows the magnetic field to build. And as mentioned earlier, as the magnetic field builds, the counter electromotive force created by that magnetic field hinders the flow of current giving the ramp the appearance of gradual increase in amplitude. This is what's to be desired and expected through a healthy solenoid circuit. Said another way, the angle of the ramp has importance. Located about 50 to 60% of the way up the ramp is an inductive characteristic known as a pintle bump. This is where the solenoid actually shuttled and it provides great diagnostic information pertaining to the mechanical functionality of the solenoid itself. The combination of the data, including the pinnel bump and the amplitude of the current ramp signifies that there is nothing wrong with the circuit and it is in fact a physical mechanical fault with the solenoid itself. As can be shown in this generic drawing of a solenoid circuit, circuit testing can be carried out as follows. Voltage supply to the solenoid, ground supply to the solenoid, and current flow can be obtained simultaneously with a three trace lamp scope. Voltage and ground should be sourced as close to the solenoid as possible to include all portions of the circuit that energize the solenoid. This will show any voltage drops anywhere in the circuit other than within the solenoid component itself. Current can be measured anywhere in this solenoid circuit because this solenoid circuit is of a series design and current flow is the same anywhere in a series circuit. Now I mentioned with good reason that current flow should always be monitored because current is the work being performed. That being said, if current is okay and is appearing as expected, there's no need to troubleshoot anywhere else in the circuit because anything that's going to affect circuit performance is certainly gonna change current flow from the expected value. That is, the shape and amplitude of the ramp is going to be altered if problems exist elsewhere in the circuit or within the solenoid itself. However, if the solenoid is healthy and current flow is not as expected, we have to refer to the available voltage and the available ground at the solenoid. Seen here on the left side of the scope capture is available voltage and ground to the solenoid as well as current flow. When we introduce unwanted resistance on the voltage side, the voltage supply side of the circuit, as the solenoid is energized, the voltage drop appears on the red trace, but not on the ground side, in green. However, when we introduce the unwanted resistance to the ground side of the circuit, we can see that the voltage supply, when the circuit is energized, remains near source voltage, and the voltage drop occurs significantly as it appears on the green trace. So it's the combination of current flow, voltage supply, and ground supply that allows us to determine several things. Is the circuit functioning as designed? If not, is the fault internal to the solenoid itself? And if not, is the fault located on the voltage supply side or the ground supply side of the circuit? All this can be derived from one simultaneous capture of voltage, ground, and current flow through the solenoid circuit. There is also other great information located within the lab scope capture of the solenoid circuit activity. 
The inductive device, that is the solenoid that takes on energy in the form of current flow and generates a magnetic field, takes several moments in time to dwell or take on that energy. However, when we turn off that solenoid circuit, that magnetic field instantly collapses and transforms back into electrical energy. And that can be seen as an inductive kick, as shown here. The inductive kick represents the health of the inductive circuit itself. With that, if there's any unwanted resistance anywhere in the circuit, the inductive kick will be affected. You can see the difference between the left side and the right side of this lab scope capture demonstrating the inductive kick. The inductive kick is much taller when no added resistance is placed in the circuit. However, when a 10,000 ohm resistor is introduced to a circuit, we can see as the circuit collapses due to the de-energizing of the solenoid, the inductive kick is far less. Furthermore, we can tell what side of the circuit the voltage drop takes place at. All we need to know is the circuit design. When the circuit is of a pull-up design, the circuit is made or broken on the voltage supply side, and this is where the inductive kick be can be seen. However, when the circuit is of a pull-down design and ground is controlled, meaning it is made or broken at the ground side, the inductive kick can be seen on the ground side of the circuit. I like to describe the current ramp very similar to this beaker you see here. This beaker is wider at the bottom than it is at the top. And if we were to maintain a rate of fill, the rate of rise would appear to increase in speed over time. This is exactly how I would describe the current ramp. As current flow rushes in to the inductive device and it takes on a magnetic field, the magnetism creates counter electromotive force. And as that magnetic field builds over time, that counter electromotive force decreases and allows the ramp to increase in amplitude as time elapses. So with that, we can't change physics. We might as well grasp it. And that means becoming familiar with the laws of physics and the components that can be found on virtually every vehicle out there. If we understand how the components work and we understand the physics, we can devise a test plan to allow us to evaluate these components within the circuits they operate on that allow these systems to accomplish a goal, regardless of what that system is. Because we would have anticipation on what to expect that gives us confidence as diagnosticians. And this is something money simply cannot buy. And the boost in confidence and efficiency makes for a stress-free day. I'm Brandon Steckler, Technical Editor of Motor Age Magazine. And I thank you for joining me on this episode of The Trainer.